Hey, what's up reefers? This is gonna be a run and gun style update on the 10 gallon budget nano reef. Before I completely change the aquascape up on this tank. And our reason is that I'm really running out of time getting ready for the kids. And also I got a huge collab video coming with quite a few YouTubers that's in the uh, reef community and that's gonna be fantastic. And I think that's gonna drop probably next week. So lots of things on the plate, but I figure I'll just do a quick snapshot first because I'm about to shake things up in this tank. Corals in this tank is doing fantastic. The frog spawn, it's Fully open. Look at this guys right here. And the bubble and me are doing happy except for that one. That one has been moving around, but that's about to become a non-factor soon. And I'll explain in a little bit. This one I've been staying put for a long time. This one actually moved down here and then back up and down here and back up. Couldn't make up his mind. Um, so it's just trying to find the right place. But once again, they are about to be gone from this tank. And I'll explain in a little bit. These fella is going to be sad. Here's Nemo right here. And he has gotten quite a bit bigger. I think it probably grew one third in size uh, since I got him. Um, actually not that long ago, just a couple months ago. And I think DJ MM is on the other side with the other anemone. Let's go visit him really quickly. And there he is. Now they seem to be getting along now. Um, whatever dominance issue they had, they kind of work things out. And the back fin, the tail fin of DJMM has grown back. When he comes out, we'll take a look at the back fin or tail fin. Yeah, it's come back and it's looking pretty good. Sliding over here, uh, let me talk about some of the corals that's been doing really well. First of all, here are the groups. Uh, Gorgonian from ORA, they have really grown. I've, I estimate they probably almost doubled in size already in um, about four months of time. So it is doing really well. And the Akans, ever since I moved them onto the rock and along on the sand bed, they started looking really good. Um, I definitely prefer no sand irritating it. Same thing with the uh, Kryptonite Candy Cane. I think this head actually split. So the head count went from like four to five and these are all nice fat polyp, which is fantastic. Sliding down here, uh, these are the, I believe, space monster. And these are chunky polyps, look at that. Um, in the 45 gallon tank, it's about maybe like two thirds the size, but in the 10 gallon, it has really, really gotten large. These zoas up here, I feel kind of bad because they have been getting stung by the frost spawn. And the f one of the rosewood pimp enemy actually rolled through and stung everything here. It was actually sitting on top of the sunny D for a day or two, but it seems no, less, uh, no worse for the wear, so that is good. One little chunk actually fell off, like it split from this colony. So I'm about to mount it on a frag plug and then start propagating them. I need to do that a lot more. This clam is supposedly a hybrid clam between squamosus and doresis it hasn't really done much in a 45 gallon so i kind of brought it up here to test out the light to make sure it's strong enough and as you can see it is really happy and i feel like the coloration actually darkened uh, ever since moving on to the 10 gallon tank so i think um, that kind of answered the question like could uh, aqualite a029 uh, keep first of all anatomy which is a resounding yes and could it keep a clam and I would like to say as a yes as well now to be fair I do supplement feeding of this clam with the reef nutrition uh, phytoplankton so I think that definitely plays a factor as well but there's no doubt in my mind that this light should be able to sustain a clam as well Zoas, this is I believe this candy apple from um, a telegram slash Shane and that's doing well and here's the Sundancer it has been like on and off really often in both tank it's just a really finicky coral for me the green ladder coral is interesting because I use a really interesting method to mount this frag after I cut it from the 45 gallon tank I actually shoved a toothpick right in the middle and then uh, with that length of toothpick, I was able to fit it right inside a hole in the live rock. And over the course of a week, it attached and started growing and it did not affect the growth of the corals at all. Um, some people think that, oh man, that's so cruel. But hey, you know, back in the days, um, this is actually one method of fragging and mounting corals, especially soft corals like Xenia as well. The green whipping willow is doing okay. The polyp is not as long as before. They actually went for a stretch where there's no polyp, but now the polyp has been back, but it's not been as long as before. So I feel like the, the location may not be ideal. But again, I'll be moving things around in this tank. Uh, same thing with back here. Here's the green tree ladder. This used to be a huge favorite of mine in my old 65 gallon tank 
which I have not talked about yet. It seems to be just holding steady in the Tang Island. It's not a big fan, but it's not hated as well. Sliding over here, let's take a look at the mushroom in the back. So we got three mushrooms here. <clears throat> That's the Jawbreaker. That's one of the Jawbreaker baby from the 45 gallon I moved up here. It's doing, it's doing well. It's not really growing that fast, but then it's, it's it definitely grown a little bit. Back there, right here, the orange one is a mushroom I picked up for, I think like 40 bucks at one of the frag swap last year. It could be a dead pool, I'm not 100% sure. And on the side, that's actually one of the mystery mushroom I picked up from a reefer many years ago. Picked this up when I picked up a bunch of like GSP for the drop of tank. And I never really paid too much attention to it until recently. I moved it up to the 10 gallon and then here the color just brilliant. It's a brilliant, brilliant gold. It was fantastic. Here you go, take a look. Here are the two clownfish. There's a DGMM, well oh, sorry, that's DGMM and there's Nemo. And um, as you can see, they're more tolerant of each other now. I wouldn't say they're a pair, like they don't rollingly swim together. They don't mind each other too, too much. At least not like before. And we'll see some of the sexy shrimps here and also the Halloween crab right there. The Halloween crab is actually one of the first uh, inhabitants of this tank. And he is still growing strong, as well as where's Chairman Bao? Chairman Bao gotta be somewhere here. I saw him earlier today. He's probably tucked away underneath some kind of enemy. Oh wait, before I was gonna feed, but before I feed, I figure I'll talk about SPS as well. Now the other big question I have is: Is this light good enough to keep a SPS coral? Um, well, it is holding steady, but it is not really growing, and it's turning a little bit of brown shade versus uh, it was kind of green before. So I would not recommend SPS underneath this light, um, at least in my setup. I do have people reaching out saying that, oh, I keep like acro tank underneath light and it works well. Um, but at least like in this experiment that I'm doing, it did not really work out too well for me. The SPS did not die, but it did not really grow and did not really color up as well. So take it for what it's worth. With that said, let's go ahead and um, Let's feed the fish, shall we? I haven't done this in a long time. This kind of like straight one-shot tank update. Uh, this is actually what I used to do um, back in the days, maybe like two and a half, three years ago. All I do would be like one single shot tank update and I'll update like two or three times a week because these are much easier. A nice little head knot to the back. Look at them. All right, well actually I wanna show you guys a shrimp. So for, uh, we started out with seven shrimps, maybe like three, four weeks in, we, uh, we lost one. And right now I believe we still have six. That's DJ MM, look at that. And these clownfish are really good about feeding the anemone, which is fantastic. Well, while the animals are eating, let me just kind of tell you guys a little bit about my plan. So in my previous update, you see the 45 gallon tank. Some of the corals are doing, uh, Especially the kryptonite candy cane. Um, initially, I thought it was, it was the ammo crab that was picking at the polyps. Um, I feel like they still were, but at the same time, I believe that the corals may already have been weakened by something going on in the tank. Uh, now, I still do not know what is going on. Um, salinity was slightly high. It was 1.027, but it's not terrible. So I slowly dropped it back to 1.025. Nitrate was high. Um, I know exactly why as well. I pulled out half of the refugium, uh, the macroalgae and refugium, but I kept dosing nitrate. So I dosed a uh, liquid nitrate make sure that I did uh, to kind of fuel, uh, fuel the um, refugium as well as some of the coral groves because you do not want non-detectable nitrate and phosphate. But the problem is like after I pulled the refugium, I kept dosing nitrate. So nitrate just kind of like kept going up and higher and higher and higher. So I feel like that contributed to it as well. Now on top of that, I also suspect maybe um, after changing out the T5 bulb, um, I went from Blue Plus and Atinic 03 to Blue Plus and Core Pro. And on top of that, I also swap out the Radeon from a G3 to a G4 Pro, even though I dialed all the way back. Anyways, there are a lot of changes. There are a lot of different factors that could be affecting it. However, the bottom line is this. LPS Toro is not doing well, specifically the Kryptonite Candy Cane. The receding kind of stopped, but it sort of slowly restarted again a little bit. It stopped for a week and then it restarted again um, a couple days ago. And the frog spawn has just not been happy in the tank. So my feeling is this, I would love to sit and just try to figure out what's going on, 
but I don't think the corals have that much time um, if it's not something that I can fix right away. I ordered an ICP test. Uh, it should arrive, well the test kit will arrive in a day or two, but then it also still take maybe like three, four days for the test result to come back. So in the meantime, what I'm thinking is this. The anemone is doing fantastic in the 10 gallon tank. The Euphilius or the LPS are doing beautifully in this tank. So I'm gonna move all the, <laughs> if I can fit, I'm laughing now. I'm gonna move all the Euphilius into the 10 gallon tank, possibly breaking up the frog spawn to, to fill all the spot. And then move all the anemone into the 45 gallon tank because the anemone has been moving and kind of bothering other corals, right? Um, so that could be the best of both worlds. So I would have a, a mountain full of Euphilius here and a mountain full of Rose Bowl of Anemone downstairs. We'll try that out. Um, you bet your butt that I'm gonna record the whole thing and I'm gonna, of course, keep you guys updated on what's happening. Uh, I've been trying to be like super transparent on this channel. This is kind of refreshing actually, uh, because normally after I film a video, I'll spend pretty much, I feel like two days or so to kind of cut everything together. So for all of you guys, OG, uh, people who have been like following this channel since the beginning, this should look familiar to you, this kind of style. It is refreshing, it is kind of nice. All right, with that said, I'm really excited to show you guys how both tanks gonna look after I do the migration. It's gonna be like species only almost. It's like all frog spawn, all our BTA. All right, see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp. It's gonna be a fantastic video. Hey, what's up, Reefers? This is gonna be a pretty serious vlog. Um, 